Hey everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna do episode two of What do we have here? So, that being said, we're walking out here across the lot, and I'm gonna spin you guys around, and we're looking at this. Now, you may be thinking, we already know what this is. Why are we doing it? What do we have here? But we may not know exactly what it is, and we don't know as much as we can find out about it. Now, anybody that's into cars and specifically Chevys or certain genres of music or stuff like that know what this car is. This is a 1964 Chevrolet Impala convertible. But that's all we know. It's a 1964 Chevrolet Impala convertible. And you don't necessarily know that it's that because with the exception of a few little tweaks and stuff, it could be a 63 to 65, 66. And if you didn't know about those little tweaks, you might not be able to tell the difference. So I'm looking at this car. And I see an Impala that's black with a white convertible top, so on and so forth. So, that being said, we got a black convertible Impala with a white vinyl top, or a white convertible top. So, first thing we're going to do, open the door, and on all these pre- 67 i think x frame cars our vin tag is going to be right here at the bottom of the M a pillar inside the door oh crap there's the divots where it was welded on there but there's no vin tag now these vin tags have a history of rotting off because they're thin steel tags and they're tack welded on there so could have rusted or rotted off or somebody could have taken it off or who knows but the vin tag's not there so now we're screwed how do we get the information off of this car without having the vin tag well being that this is a early 60s car and you'll find out in just a second that it's a body by fisher car they have what's called a trim tag now on this trim tag we're going to get a lot of information about this car now it's not going to be as much as a vin but it'll be quite a bit of information so i'm going to put a picture of this vin tag up on the screen for you and i'm going to go through and i'm going to break down everything that uh that's on here and show you how to decode it and what it means so before i go too far all the information that i'm about to give you guys that i'm getting off of this trim tag I sourced online at impalas.org. They're not sponsoring this video. They don't even know I'm making this video. They don't even know who I am. I just, that's where I found it. And it's a very, very nice, easy to read, informative thing. Had all the information I needed. I'm not that great on the internet and I was easily able to find everything I needed and figure it out. So we're gonna start going over this tag. So. We've got a 4C. That's our build date. That's 4, which is April, 4th month, April. C, which will be the third week of the month. So it's the third week of April. Then you come down here to style. These first numbers here are 64. So it's April, third week of April, 1964. Now, now that we know that, we know it's a 64 impala so then we come over here and we got 1467 
Well, 1467 is Impala SS convertible. So, wow, this is getting better. Not only is it an Impala convertible, it's a super sport model also, which is cool. Makes it a little bit more rare but not necessarily so anyways now we've got a 64 impala ss convertible which is super cool very desirable car and uh and and that's pretty neat so we'll move over a little bit and it says body ja ja is the assembly plant and that's going to stand for janesville wisconsin which is where the car was assembled now anytime you decode a trim tag or a VIN or anything like that. Like this one's JA, Janesville, Wisconsin. Those are assembly plants. Those aren't production plants or anything like that. Those are assembly plants. That's where this car was put together. Now the body was made by, as you can see right here on the tag, body by Fisher. This body was made by Fisher. So Fisher, most likely i don't know for sure i'd have to look it up i'll look it up and leave a little note for you guys but fisher's plant may have been in detroit michigan or flint michigan or they may have had one by each assembly plant or whatever but fisher produced these bodies and then shipped them to chevrolet wherever they wanted them or wherever they needed them and then they went there and and that's where they were assembled so anyways fisher made this body it was shipped to janesville wisconsin and assembled there so after the ja for janesville we have a 2084 the 2084 is the sequential body number so that's going to be like the the last four of the vin so it's going to tell you basically the end of the production number or it can be an order confirmation number if the car was special ordered so sequential body number or order confirmation number on special orders now we're going to move down to the next line we have trim and it's going to be a 815-2. Now the 815, this is this trim line here with this code here gives you your interior trim level and any small extras, I guess you would say. So the 815 stands for Impala SS black with bucket seats. So now we know that it has a black interior bucket seats and i believe the impalas or the ss's were all vinyl this car has vinyl black bucket seats but it doesn't differentiate in the 815 whether they're vinyl or not but i think they were all vinyl so impala ss black bucket seats now the dash two the two stands for black convertible top which as you see here that's not a black convertible top, that's white. So that tells me that this top at one point or another has been changed. It's not the original top. Somebody had a new top put on it and it's a very nice top, but it's not the original. So after that, we go over a little bit and we have paint. Now our paint code is a 943. 943 stands for goldwood yellow huh wait a minute is this ain't yellow so originally this car was a 1964 impala ss convertible goldwood yellow with a black vinyl top and a black interior well there's your goldwood yellow underneath the black and it's got a white top so this was a yellow with a black top which i bet was a sharp looking car and uh honestly 
I think I would probably prefer the Goldwood Yellow with the black vinyl or the black convertible top versus the black with the white top. I'm not a fan of white anything that's not paint because it just it gets dirty. You accidentally spill a little bit of your coffee on that top when you're trying to get in the car. It's going to be there forever. Yellow with a black top, I think, is way better. So then we're going to go down to the next line, which says ACC, which is going to be accessories or um, options. Let's call it options. That's what they called it. So those are extra options. So we have an M and an R. So M stands for two-speed power glide. So we know it's a two-speed power glide car. And we have an R, which stands for rear speaker. So that's, that's pretty much the breakdown of the trim tag. Now we know a lot about this car. We know even without having a VIN tag, we still got a lot of information. And we found out that it's a 64 Impala SS convertible Goldwood yellow with a black convertible top and black bucket seats with a two-speed power glide and a rear speaker and by rear speaker I don't know how well I can open the door if I have to but if you look through right there you see that grating in the cutout of the seat there with the Impala logo on it That's the speaker they're talking about. That's that's the rear speaker option. They put a speaker in the top of the back seat. So anyways, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, the one thing that we don't know that we could have learned from the VIN, what engine this has in it. We know it's got a two-speed power glide and that's all we know about the drivetrain. That's all we know about the drivetrain. It has a T-speed power glide and it has a motor in it. Now, one thing I didn't tell you while we were looking at the trim tag is, according to what I read, I don't know if this is 100% true, but according to what I read, if the engine is not specified on the trim tag, it's a small block V8. So the options, engine options for this car were an L6, which is an inline six cylinder, a 283 small block V8, a 327 small block V8, or a 409. So if this, since it's not specified on the trim tag, what motor it has, that means it should be a small block Chevy car, which is going to be a 283 or a 327. So another thing I didn't show you on the trim tag, which is just kind of cool. I mean, obviously it breaks everything down, but it says Chevrolet division, General Motors Corp, Detroit, Michigan. And then down here it says this car is finished with magic mirror acrylic slacker I just thought that was pretty neat you guys might think it's dumb and I'm dumb for telling you that but I think it's pretty neat so anyways back to it what engine does this thing have in it I don't know so we come in here and right in front of the passenger side head just above the water pump on every small block Chevy I've ever done anything with it has a code right there that code is F I 230 H C H that's what you call a suffix code that suffix code will tell you just about everything you need to know about this engine so I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture of the suffix code up here and I'm gonna break it down for you so First of all, before I get into it, this information was found on LimeBook and it's or LimeBook suffix code online. Lime LimeBook suffix code and they get you suffix codes for just about anything. 
it's pretty cool there's a lot of stuff on there so uh go check it out if you're wanting to learn about your suffix code this doesn't just apply to this motor and this or this engine for the people that think there's a difference doesn't just apply to this engine and this impala it applies to essentially any small block chevy engine but it's got the suffix code on the pad the machine pad just above the water pump in front of the passenger side head and this one is a fi 230hch i already told you the f stands for flint michigan which is where it is, was assembled the i is september that's the ninth letter in the alphabet so it's going to be the ninth month of the year which is september the 23 is the 23rd day of september so september 23rd and the zero is not used i think they just put the zero there as a placeholder because we've done these suffix codes on four or five different motors and there's always a zero there and we can never find what the zero means so i think they just put a zero in there as a placeholder like okay we're done putting the um assembly date the build date now we're moving on to the next thing so then the last thing we have here is the hch hch in the suffix code stands for 1966 327 275 horsepower so now we go oh cool our car came with no wait it couldn't have come with it our car is a 64 this motor is a 66 so that means that's not the motor that came in this car which is not uncommon in a 64 model vehicle the motor could have blown up or worn out or got broke and somebody got another motor out of something else junkyard buddy's old car whatever and put it in here so having a motor that's not the original motor to the car in a 60s model car not something that's rare the, the fact that it's got another 60s motor in it's kind of different but anyway so it's a 66 327 275 horsepower now that must be like in my opinion kind of a hot rod motor because 275 horsepower is more than the it, it it's just it's got to be high output i'm thinking that's the high output version of the 327 i didn't look it up but if i were to look it up i'm bet i'm betting it would say like a 327 ho so anyways the hch stands for 66 327 275 horsepower four barrel holly carb power glide transmission which we knew the car came with a power glide transmission now we found out that this motor was in front of a power glide also which i mean there's a chance that this motor came out of a 66 impala we we don't know it could be an impala it could be a nova it could be a caprice it could be a biscayne it could be just about anything but anyways and the last thing that it says is passenger car so 66 327 four barrel power glide from a passenger car so now we know that we know this car originally came with a 283 or a 327 and other than the suffix code telling us that it's the wrong year there's nothing else keeping us from knowing if this was the original motor from this car or not because usually where the suffix code is down there on the pad that i showed you it'll have the last six or the last eight of the vin first i think it's the last six of the vin it'll have the last six of the vin and then it'll have the suffix code so you can match the the vin on the front of the block where the suffix code is to the vin with the vehicle and that's where people get the term numbers matching numbers matching means that the vin stamped in the engine the vin stamped in the transmission are the same as the vin assigned to the vehicle so 
This one was a little different because we didn't have a VIN tag. Now, there is other options. So the VIN tag is gone. On X-Frame cars, not, not all cars, on X-Frame cars, which this is, underneath, basically, let's say underneath the driver's side floor pan, where the transmission cross member butts up to the frame, on top of the frame, there is usually a partial VIN stamped, which if you have the body off of the frame, really easy to clean up and see without the body off of the frame it's almost impossible to see there's also a vin number some say it's a full vin some say it's a partial vin it's going to be back here on top of the between the frame and the trunk pan behind the hump for the rear end and about halfway between the hump for the rear end and the mount for the rear bumper on top of the frame. Now, if you have a good mirror and you can get down underneath there, there's a gap like that. If you got a small wire brush, you can get in there and uh, wire brush it off. And with a good mirror and a flashlight, you can read the VIN. I was gonna add, sorry, I thought I left something out here. I was gonna add, that to this video because I did that earlier before I started filming. I came out here, I crawled underneath and uh, and did my best to try to get that VIN because I wanted the VIN to be able to decode with the rest of the decoding on this car. And I got under there, I found where the partial VIN on the rear frame was and I got a wire brush in there and cleaned it really, really good. And got in there with my mirror and my flashlight. And it was so, the frame rail is so pitted that it's unreadable. I was able to make out it one single two, number two, and that was it. So something in the VIN on this car has a two in it, but that doesn't do me any good. So. I wanted to tell you guys if you got a frame that's cleaner or you have your body off and you can take the time to really clean it good and maybe spray some water or paint or something on it to help make the engraving in the frame show up you can get a frame there or you can get a vin there if you don't have a vin tag like this one didn't but i was unable to do that on this car but except for the only thing that I can think of that we would have learned from the VIN that we weren't able to get off of the trim tag and the suffix code from the motor is what motor came in the car. Now, like I said, according to what I know, or according to what I read, because it's not differentiated on the trim tag, it was a 283 or a 327, which breaks it down pretty good. But it still doesn't break it down all the way because we don't know it could have been a 283 car and it has a 327 in it which either way it doesn't matter because we know it's not a numbers matching car it's not the original motor so that's the only thing all we could have found out was that it actually was a 327 car and if we found that out it's got a 327 in it so it still has the right motor in it but if we would have ran the suffix codes on the motor like we did anyways, we would have found out that that wasn't the original motor. So we pretty much found out everything we needed to find out about it to get it broken down, all the options, everything. And uh, so that's it, that's pretty cool. If you guys are new to the channel, check out some of my old videos, please. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you watch a couple of the last videos, you'll know that I'm doing a giveaway. I have a, put a picture of it right here. It's a dog dish hubcap air cleaner that I made myself. I made the whole base and all that stuff. And I'm giving it away 
if you buy something off my merch site www.harmongarage.net there's a link in the description you go on there you buy something every dollar spent equals one entry towards winning the air cleaner it's going to be the top of the air cleaner the base of the air cleaner and a brand new filter so not much but it's something if you guys are interested grab some merch get a chance to win an air cleaner and uh hope you enjoyed the video so thanks for watching if it wasn't for you guys i wouldn't be able to do this y'all have a good one we'll see you next time